Starting from nothing, this guide will show you how to turn yourself and your pawn into the ultimate fighter build in Dragon's Dogma 2 that takes no damage but somehow obliterates everything. But there are some key differences in how you set up your character, depending on if you're looking to defend yourself or deal some damage. Because fighters can definitely do both. This guide will go over where to find the best weapons, armor, rings, and shield early on, but also how to upgrade them as you progress. We'll also go over the best skills for yourself and your pawn and how to unlock the secret fighter vocation skill which is actually pretty annoying. Everything is timestamped below for your convenience but I'd recommend building your pawn into the ultimate utility tank so you can farm rift crystals by being useful to other players while you yourself can go for more of a damage orientated route. And also a big shout out to those of you who already ordered our vocation t-shirt. They're now back in stock if you want to pick one up from the link down below in the description. So starting out, here are some mistakes to avoid in character creation. And don't worry, there's a guide linked below on how to change your character or pawn later in the game. But a few things will affect our in-game stats. Firstly, you have height, leg and arm length, which affects how far your weapons can reach and how fast you can run. The taller and bulkier your character is, the higher your total stamina will be, but it will also regenerate slower compared to being smaller. So ideally a fighter wants to be large and bulky. This will also positively affect the amount of weight you can carry as well, allowing you to wear heavier armor and still carry more items without being over encumbered. Now we'll be going over the best equipment and gear to use early and we'll be upgrading it throughout the course of the video. So you'll start the game here in the Border Watch Outpost, you'll then have to go to Melv, and then the main quest will take you all the way south to the city of Vernworth. You come here very early on, and this is where this guide is going to start. In the center of the city of Vernworth, you're going to find the Merchant's Quarters. And from here, we want to go south to the Shakir's Inn. So I'm standing in the Merchant Quarters right here, but if I turn around and go up the stairs towards the church, and then go left, you can go up these stairs towards that inn I mentioned earlier. But instead of talking to the innkeeper, you're going to go up these stairs to the bedrooms. And just go past the bedrooms where you'll find a balcony just at the edge here. And if you climb up this ladder, it's actually possible for us to get some secret loot. And one of the best weapons you can get early for a fighter. So jump over here and then jump to this corner of this building. And right here, you can work your way up to the church bell tower. Now you will find a Seeker's Tone, which you're going to want to collect, and a bunch of treasure chests. And if you loot this one just here, you'll get the Silver Rapier. Now as you can see, the Silver Rapier does 184 damage. In fact, the Silver Rapier is actually the best weapon you can get early on in Dragon's Dogma until much later in the game. So it's definitely worth upgrading as soon as you get it, which I'll talk about more at the end of the video. But now we need to get a much better armor set because this one is terrible. So next, Next, from the Vernworth Merchant District, we're going to travel all the way south through the Vernworth Noble Quarters. Keep following the road until you arrive at Vernworth Castle, just here on the map. You can see I'm standing at the front gates just here, but we're actually going to go to the left, where you're going to see this big sort of pillar building, and we're going to hop up here. We're going to run over to this well where there's a ladder which we can actually climb down. And right at the end, we're going to find a hidden chest which we can open. This is actually going to reward us with the entire Marcher's armor set. Now to get out, we just go through the right-hand side sewer grate and we come out back in the noble's quarters at the battlements here. This is going to give us the full Marcher's armor set, which is essentially the guard armor set. And it's extremely lightweight for its defensive values. The helmet only weighs 0.55, the chest piece weighs 1.3 and the legs weigh 1, while the cape is optional. So now we've got that armor set, we're going to come back to the main city of Vernworth. And you want to come over here to the northwest entrance of the city, near the western Oxcart station here on the map. You can see the exit out of the city there, and that is the Oxcart station, even though it's not there yet. And we actually want to come all the way around here and back up towards the Noble Quarters. Now, if you run up here and around, you'll see there's kind of like these uh, little planters and flower beds. You can climb up here and actually hop onto the battlements quite easily. And then 
you can actually make your way on top of the aqueduct by hopping down here. There's a bunch of gold you can pick up behind you, 2000 gold, and then we're going to just run down the aqueduct. On the first battlements, you'll find a seeker's token just over here, which you can pick up. And then we're going to hop back on this path and carry on running. Then hop over the next battlements and carry on running again. Eventually, you'll come to the end where you'll find a hidden cave. So jump up the side and go on inside this cave. You can see we've come from the city of Vernworth all the way to the northwest to Headwater Cavern. Light your lantern when you go in and if you're struggling with the bandits, just pick them up and throw them on the floor and then run over to them and finish them off while they're down. Now, as you're going down this path, you eventually come to these wooden planks and you can climb up into this other area of the cave here. And just here on your immediate right, you're going to find some plate armor. As you guys can see, the plate armor is almost twice as good as the marcher's armor set with almost double the physical and magical defense and resistance to fire. But it does weigh three times as much, which means you won't be able to carry as much if you're wearing this as your main armor set. But don't worry, we'll be replacing it shortly. From where we found that steel plate armor, we're going to go left past this campsite and underneath this big waterfall here you're going to find the miner's hosen in this chest this is a big upgrade to your leg armor the miner's hosen only weighs slightly more but yet provide double the magic defense and a lot more physical defense so now we've finished looting headwater cavern we're going to go back to the city of vernworth now we need to find better rings here in vernworth to the pawn guild where you can hand in the collectible seeker tokens these are tokens you find scattered around the game world and if you collect 50 of these you can then get the ring of triumph this ring is going to boost your max health and stamina by a hundred points and also your max carry weight by five making it one of the most versatile rings in the game so make sure you keep your eye out for those tokens to get the next best ring weapon shield and armor set we must travel to the checkpoint rest town and we're specifically going to go to the northwestern gate where you're going to find the ox cart station just here on the map. Here's the gate and here is the ox cart station. Now, if the cart isn't there yet, just hold down B and await the ox cart. The game will then wait until this gentleman with the hat arrives and you can talk with him and he'll take you to the checkpoint rest town for 200 gold. So then just go ahead and jump in back and we'll be off. This will bring you directly to the checkpoint rest town. So this is basically a shortcut from the main city on Vernworth all the way to the west side of the map over here to the checkpoint rest town. So here we are in checkpoint rest town and this is the main market square with the well just here. You will pick up a bunch of quests when you arrive but we want to go to the left here where you're going to find a small weapon store just in here on the left. And if we speak to this lady here, you can actually buy the next upgrade for our sword, but I will be showing you where to get 20,000 gold in a moment. But now we're going to go to the ring section and we're going to buy the ring of tenacity. It increases your max stamina by 90 points. Perfect for blocking as a fighter build. So next we're going to be grabbing the best shield ring and also a bunch of awesome weaponry and armor. So starting from the checkpoint rest town just here on the map, we're going to go northeast across this bridge. We're then going to carry on going north down this rocky valley just here, continue down this valley past this campsite until you reach the ancient battleground. You should be able to work your way around the edge of the ancient battleground until you come through a portcullis on the other side of it. This is where we're going to be finding our next NPC quest, located just here on the map. He's going to guide us into the ancient battlegrounds, where we're going to find a bunch of secret loot. So from the checkpoint rest town, we're going to head out of the town. Then we're going to go northwards to the left here. We'll carry on going northwards down this valley until we reach this large ravine. Now you can just go ahead and ignore all the enemies and just run down the valley straight on. Eventually you'll come to a woodland at the bottom. Just head through that woodland and past this campsite. You'll see some light up ahead and this is going to lead you to the ancient battleground. So you'll see a dragon and cyclops battling. Now if you run to the left of the ancient battleground you can quite easily avoid the drake that's sitting in the middle until you get to the campsite on the other side here. Now, if you head to the left around the edge of the Forsaken Battleground, you can quite easily avoid or run from the drake that's sitting there in the middle. 
You can see there's a big gate on the other side here. And if you run back out of this gate through these ruins, you'll find someone being attacked here. Here we're going to find Oscar fighting some harpies. You're going to want to save him because he's actually going to send us on the next quest. And it's easier if we have his assistance. Though to be honest, you can just speed run through this part of the dungeon, ignoring all of the enemies if you want to. He'll then actually be your guide and you can follow him to the next part of the mission. If you actually search the ruin just to the left of where he was standing, just south of the crossroads here on the map, you will find a free location to obtain the Shield of Vernworth, a massive upgrade over your original shield, but don't worry, we'll be replacing this with a much better one very shortly. But now let's follow him back through the gates into the ancient battleground. And there is a campfire on the left there if you want to rest before venturing onwards. You can see the dragon and the cyclops still battling in the background there. Pretty awesome view. So follow him all the way to the top and eventually you'll reach the entrance to the castle here. There are some skeletons inside which you can either run past or kill. If you just sit here and defend the mages, Oscar will help you kill them all pretty easily. From the entrance, you can then follow him up this spiral staircase and then come up the spiral staircase and climb this ladder just here. Then if you follow these blue little lanterns, it will then lead you to another hidden cave area. But if this video has been helpful so far, please do leave a like in return. They do take quite a while to make, with a few more skeletons to take out once you come down. After you come down the ladder here, you're going to want to come through this little archway to the right. Just carry on following our guide. He's going to guide you up the stairs here and then to this room on the right hand side where he'll show you a bell and a tome. Should do it, eh? He will then give you the ancient battleground key, and I'll show you what that's for in a moment. But right ahead of us, we have the nation's death knoll, which we'll need for a quest later. Then there's a chest behind us, which we can loot just here. And that's going to give us the makeshift vault key, which we need to get the best shield in the game. So now if we leave this room and we actually go left, you're going to see some boxes just here on the right in front of a door. Now you can actually destroy these boxes and use the ancient battleground key that he gave us to open this. So we're going to go ahead and open this door and you're going to see there's a bunch of treasure chests just here. So let's go ahead and open this first one which gives us a fairy stone and 2200 gold and then this one gives us the infernal edge which is a unique spear weapon. It's one of the best duo spears you can get early on in Dragon's Dogma 2. So now we've looted that, we can come back outside and we're just going to continue on up the stairs following our friend once again into another spiral staircase. And if you go to the top of the spiral staircase, there's another ladder and we can actually grab another secret at this location. Once you reach the top here, just carry on to the battlements of the castle and climb up here and then on the left you will find a heavily armored cyclops that is currently sleeping. You can see his health bar just there. Well, if you actually walk past him... Oh, okay, my pawns have just attacked him. We can loot this chest here. And this is going to give you the two-handed Warhammer Black Matter. One of the best two-handed warrior weapons you can get in the game early on. I just wanted to show you it while we're here, in case you want to change class later. But as you can see, this is a fully armored Cyclops and he is ready to destroy us. If you do climb up on the top here, you can just start stabbing him in the face to get some mega damage. Now, the reason you want to kill this particular armored Cyclops is for the unique weapon that he drops. And then just keep shield bashing him in the ankles after the armor's off and he'll fall over so you'll be able to defeat him. As you can see, he drops the Malorian Cyclops Veil. Now, this is an incredible helmet for a warrior. Now, if you climb up this ladder to the left of that chest we looted, you can then jump over this barrier here and you'll find a secret cave hidden behind this location. Turn on your lantern and go into the World Send Cavern. Carry on heading into this area until you find some bandits, which you can easily kill. And next to the campsite, you will find a hidden brass patent camping kit, which as you can see, looks very pretty. Now, if you carry on further into this dungeon, you eventually come to a hole. Now on the right of this hole, there is a big rock that you can actually destroy. This was the entrance, we came to this campsite and then we went right and then all the way down here until we found this hole. We're now going to break away this little section down here so we can continue onwards 
and through this cavern until we get to this next T-junction here on the map. Now, once you get to this T-junction, you can see you can go right here, or if you go straight on into this next room, there's a bunch of collapsed pillars. And just at the back down here, you're going to find a giant ore supply. I mean, look how much ore's in this room. It's ridiculous. Now, if we come back to this T-junction and go to the right, we're going to get the best ring in the game for the fighter. Come into this next room and you will find a little display plinth with a few skeletons in. This is the Ring of Grit. Now, the Ring of Grit reduces the stamina cost by 25% for blocking with a shield. This is by far the best ring for a fighter in the game. In fact, we can actually get another one in the late game to reduce the block cost by a total of 50%. So make sure you subscribe for the next fighter endgame guide where we'll go through those details. You can also find another chest at the back here with 5,000 gold but there are a couple of ghosts waiting to ambush you. Now, after you've looted this area, just come through to the right here and then head upwards and you'll find the exit to this cave. Do take care though, because all of these guys are enemies. So you're going to want to run on past them. Head through this next cavern that takes you to the mountain shrine. So now if you want to get the best shield in Dragon's Dogma 2 early on, you're going to come back to the city of Vernworth after you've got the Vault Key, which we collected earlier. And once you're in the city of Vernworth, you can come south all the way through the nobles' quarters to the Vernworth Castle just here. This is the castle gate, and you'll see the entrance to the castle right ahead. Sometimes there are guards standing at the front entrance, but you can just wait for someone to come on inside and then just open them even though they tell you you're not allowed in there it doesn't matter come to the left and open the door to the great hall if you do want a unique cape there is one hidden behind the throne there but we're actually going to go to the left and down here and then if we look to the right you can head straight on and you'll see a staircase leading down into the depths of the castle vault now, there's a few different ways to actually enter this location, but we have the key, so we can do it the proper way. Sometimes there will be a guard here, and if there is a guard, all you need to do, retrace your footsteps until you get back to this corridor. There's a doorway just to the right here that leads to the kitchen. What you're going to do is grab one of these barrels. You're going to aim the barrel at the guard down here while standing at the top of the stairs. Throw the barrel at him, and as soon as that hits him, he's going to start sprinting towards you. You can then pick up that guard and run all the way up the stairs with him. Throw him as far as you can away. And then you can sprint back down to the vault and there'll now be nobody standing there. So you can walk over since you have the key and press B to open it. And your character will get that vault key out and use it to open the doors. Now, when you come inside this location, just come to the left here. There's actually a secret treasure chest has 20,000 gold. We're going to need that in a moment. And then there's a chest just here which has a unique cape in it, the Worm Hunter Cape, which is an Easter egg from Dragon's Dogma 1. But then, most importantly, right here, we have the Daughter of the Evening Shield. Now, the Daughter of the Evening Shield is quite a heavy shield, but it is one of the best in the game since it has the third highest knockdown power. Especially once upgraded, this shield is able to knock down most enemies in one hit, if not most monsters, by staggering their legs. It also has a secret effect where you can actually use it to reflect the baleful stare of Medusa back at her, turning her into stone. There's also a decayed Medusa head and a ring of reassurance. Now, efficiency-wise, this is arguably the best moment in the game to buy yourself better armor and weapons because the next massive upgrade will actually be all the way in the Volcanic Island camp just before the end game. And if you don't have enough money by now, don't worry, there's a guide linked down below in the description that explains how you can make lots and lots of gold very quickly early on in Dragon's Dogma 2. So just follow that until you have enough money to buy this equipment. And then we can go ahead and buy the best armor and weapons from vernworth city all the way back over here to the checkpoint rest town and once we arrive here we can go back to select
Celeste Smithy just here on the map. You can see this is the ox cart and this is the town center. We're just going to head down this main pathway here where this red shield signpost is. We have the wing Sala. This incredibly cool looking dragon helmet is the best helmet you can get until much later on in the game. Next we have our body armor. You can either go for the Melorian plate armor which is also usable if you later change to the warrior vocation who is the two-handed sword wielder or my personal favorite is the Dominion armor, which is the matching armor set piece for the helmet we just brought as well. Next, we have the leg armor and the Raptor claw armor is going to be the best option here. It also matches the rest of the armor set. Now from here, there are a few cape options. The commander's mantle probably looks the coolest out of all of them. And then we have weapons and we're going to go for the Owl Mace, a elemental sword that does 120% ice damage and freezes most enemies you'll be attacking with it. It also has a higher base damage than the rapier and obviously does magic damage. Now if you also give this to your pawn it's super handy because it actually freezes a lot of enemies it attacks, reducing the amount of foes that can attack your companions. So if you personally are playing a fighter build, these are going to be the best skills that your character is going to want to use to achieve lots of damage. However the pawn skills are actually different so we'll go over those in a moment. Firstly we have Airwood slash which allows you to make a jump attack against flying enemies. This is literally the only way you can take down flying creatures and it is absolutely invaluable. It can also be upgraded to Cloudwood Slash, which lets you jump even higher to take them down. But alternatively, it's very effective against Cyclopses and Trolls when you want to attack their weak spot. The next best skill is going to be Shield Bash, which essentially runs into an enemy, knocking them over or off balance if they're a larger monster. It can also be upgraded to shield pummel which strikes the target twice instead of just once and if you pair this with a shield that has high knockback like the one we got in this video you or your pawn are going to be knocking down everything in the game very quickly next we have the gouging skewer ability you're going to start out using your shield pummel ability to knock enemies over and then you're going to run over to them and start using gutting skewer which pins the enemy on the ground while you deliver tons of damage to their weak spot this is by far the the best ability for a fighter looking to do insane amounts of damage. Nothing even comes close. You just have to make sure you use it at the right time because sometimes it's overkill and if you miss it, it's really bad. Now we do have a skill called Perfect Defense, which can be upgraded to Divine Defense. And essentially it's just an unlimited block button that consumes lots of stamina. In my opinion, it's much more useful for you to learn how to block properly instead of using this skill. Next, we're gonna unlock the secret fighter skill, Righteous Fury. To do this, you need to raise the affinity of Sir Leonard in Melv to a high enough level. This can be done from very early on though, just follow this guide. So from very early on, you can unlock this secret skill in the city of Vernworth. You want to come to the northeastern gate ox cart station just here on the map and once you arrive at this location you'll see a man in a red jacket who will approach you and talk to you he has a letter that he wants delivered to sir leonard in melv use the signpost with the bell to wait for the ox cart and then once it arrives talk to this guy here and pay 100 gold to travel to melv this will take you from vernworth all the way north over here back to the town of melv and if you come on inside and go back to the well that you went to previously you can find sir uh, Lennart. He will tell you to go and kill the Saurians outside the village for him. So head back outside the town and across the bridge and you'll see the Saurian nest just to the left there. You can use the provided explosives to kill them or just go there and kill them yourself. After they're dealt with, head back to the village and report that you've done it. This will also allow you to deliver the letter to him. It will also give you the next part of the quest, which is to drop a jar of poison located just outside the village onto the Saurian nest so they don't come back. Now it's very important you don't accidentally throw this into the river because you'll poison the villagers water. You can then head back to town and report back to the captain. Now that's done we need to take the ox cart back to Vernworth and we need to claim the other quest reward for the delivered letter. Then if you haven't already you'll need to finish at least one of Brent's main quests. Sneaking into the castle is the fastest one. Then after you've done one of those it make sure you also hand it in afterwards it will trigger the Melv dragon attack so make sure you save at the end before doing this next part 
you're going to want to take the ox cart back to Melv, and as you arrive, you'll see the dragon attacking. You'll need to repel the attack in order to succeed. And the easiest way to do this is just to run straight up the hill to the tower, which has the ballista right at the top. Now, you will need your pawns to help you move the ballista and rotate it around. Then you can aim it at the drake and fire the ballista to make it run. Now, interestingly, if you hit it three times, it is possible to actually kill the drake, which rewards you with a really cool weapon, but it also currently breaks an important quest. So I wouldn't actually suggest doing that right now. Instead, just repel the drake and then afterwards you can talk to Sir Leonard. At this point, his affinity should be high enough to immediately reward you with the soldier's code. If he doesn't give it to you, you must raise his favor even higher by either doing escort missions or giving him interesting or expensive items once per day. He seems to like the common goblin horns, for example. But you can check out our wiki for more information on that. If you now read the soldier's code from your inventory, you can learn the secret fighter skill for yourself and also your pawn. This unlocks Righteous Fury. This reigns a flurry of blows on the target dealing massive damage at a great cost of stamina. It's usually overkill on most targets, but the damage is far greater than the gutting skewer ability. Do take care using it though because if you miss the first strike it will actually leave you vulnerable to attack. I always find the best time to use this ability is, is when you ground an enemy so it's lying on the floor and you can hit its weak point from the ground. At this point, you can just deal tremendous damage to that enemy, as you can see here in this example against the Griffin. So now we're going to be going over the best pawn skills. Starting out, we once again are using Cloudwood Slash. This really helps out other parties that are going to be employing your pawn and allows them to deal with flying creatures. The next ability that is invaluable for your pawn to have is Shield Summons which can be upgraded to Shield Drum. This basically just aggros enemies that are nearby and draw them towards your pawn so it can tank them effectively. Now you can use this on your main character as well, but to be honest, as long as you have a brain, it's pretty easy not to waste a skill slot on this ability and defend your pawns. Unless you're going up against a particular boss and you find you're losing aggro. Whereas other people will be employing your pawn to act as a tank in their party. So Shield Drum is really really important. The next ability is Springboard, which can be upgraded to Launchboard. And this is really important to have on your pawn for its utility. It allows other players to access secret treasures by instructing your pawn to use this ability so they can jump up and grab out of reach chests. Having this skill is going to allow you to jump straight onto their most vulnerable position without wasting any stamina. And the next skill I highly recommend is Shield Bash, upgraded to Shield Pommel. For the reasons I mentioned earlier, even your pawn can use this skill to massively stagger and just take out enemies. Anyone on the ground cannot fight you. Now, when it comes to upgrading your equipment, I'd only bother doing so once you get the best gear from the checkpoint rest town. Since there's then going to be quite a gap before you get the next level of gear. Upgrading your gear with Dwarven Smithing will give you the highest knockdown resistance, especially your shield, which will then stagger and knock down monsters more easily. You can check out this next video guide on how to do that and I will see you there.